Welcome back, kids. We're going to do moles class number three. We're going to look at moles and how they're central to chemistry in that their relationship to mass and also to number of particles and also to volumes of gases. We're going to do a lot of two-step math problems. You have to have your periodic table. Got mine right here. Got to have a calculator. You're going to need lots of paper. And we're going to draw a shark. Good day for a shark. Now, the mole in chemistry has many connections. One mole, of course, is going to equal this number of particles, 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd. That is called Avogadro's number. One mole is also equal to the molar mass of an element or the molar mass of a compound. And we can get the molar mass of any element off the periodic table. And we can get the molar mass of any compound by writing the formula, listing the atoms that are in that compound, and multiplying by the number of atoms in the compound times the molar mass from the periodic table and summing them up. We've done this many times already. Now, one mole of a gas is going to be equal to 22.4 liters of a gas. And that's a certain size. It's a little bigger than my head. In the classroom, there's a wooden box that's about that size, a little bigger than a basketball. Now, the gas Gases have to be at what's called standard temperature and standard pressure. Now, standard temperature happens to be zero degrees centigrade or 273 Kelvin, and standard pressure happens to be one atmosphere or, or well, there's other units. These are normal conditions, and we're going to assume for now all of our gases are just at normal conditions so that it's going to fit in a box or a container or a balloon of 22.4 liters. And when you have exactly one mole of gas, that's at normal conditions, that's how big it's going to be. It doesn't matter how big the particles are, they're super small or they're bigger, but they're so far apart from each other that the size is irrelevant. It's the amount of space they take up. So a mole can be a mass, a mole can be a number of particles, or now a mole of a gas can be a certain size. And we call it STP, the standard temperature and pressure. That's actually in table A on the reference table. It just gives you the units. We're not going to worry about that. When we get to gases, we'll deal with them. But we're going to assume that the gases, one, one mole of any gas is going to be 22.4 liters for now. Now, literally, moles are central to chemistry. And I'll tell you a quick story to make you understand it, I hope, a little better. Now, when I was a kid, I was really into chemistry, and you know, I got picked on quite a bit. I mean, I'm a little cool now, but I wasn't so cool when I was a kid. It took a while to grow into this. And most chemists' children were picked on, and most chemists were picked on. And so we really couldn't stand going to places like Disney or anything like that because, you know, even there, parents would cut in front of our parents in line, and it just, nobody treated us well. So we really needed to find our own place. And lo and behold, Google Earth came out. And chemists around the world started looking around, is there any place that nobody's found yet that we can kind of take over? And as it turns out, there's a little tiny island. It's about 100 miles east of Florida, out in the middle of the Atlantic Ocean. It's not very big. And chemists said, hey, nobody's got that. We'll take it. And we took a boat there, not me, but chemists. And we called it Mole Island. The chemists called it Mole Island. And, you know, we would go there, and it was fun, and everything was cool. But, you know, it was the ocean. Every once in a while, a kid would just disappear. But compared to normal, it wasn't so bad. But after a while, chemists from all over the world started coming. It started getting crowded. So there was not really any more room. So Google Earth got a little better. We backed out a little. We said, can we see anything else? And it looks like oh, there was another island just to the southeast, and we called that Mass Island. And then we looked again. And then there was another island to the southwest, and we called that Particle Island. And one more time we looked, and we found another island called Volume Island. Now, on all these islands, it was really good stuff to do. And you could go from one island to another. You'd take a little boat, and you'd go over there. But every once in a while, we'd lose a couple of kids in a boat. They would just disappear. And it was obviously terrible. It was obviously a problem. And we obviously had to take care of this. So we chipped in all our money and we said, let's build some bridges so the kids can stay out of the water. There's probably a shark in the water. And we raised as much money as we could, but we couldn't afford enough bridges. We could only afford three bridges. We couldn't afford to bridge the outside islands. But we figured, hey, with three bridges, if you happen to be on Mass Island and you want to visit Particle Island, well, you go over two bridges. Big deal. Not as short as a straight line, but we couldn't afford all these extra bridges. 
being chemists, though, we said, we can't just have kids going from island to island for free. We're going to put up like a fake toll booth. you got to say something smart. We want our kids to grow up smart. So we started putting up these audio toll booths. And if the kids would say it going in either direction, this audio toll, it let you go back and forth. And it was a lot of, you know, it was a lot of fun. The kids had to remember which bridge are we on, which, which toll do we have to pay? Well, to go from Mole Island to Mass Island, you have to remember this. One mole is equal to the molar mass. It's equal to the molar mass of an, a, an element or it's equal to the molar mass of a compound. So you can go back and forth from moles to mass by remembering this equality. And you'd say, I want to go across to Mass Island. You have to say, one mole of any uh, substance is equal to its molar mass. And it would let you go. And it was the same toll going in the other direction. One mole is equal to the molar mass. And then the other island, particle island to mole island, you'd have to say a different toll. You'd have to say, hey, one mole is equal to Avogadro's number of particles. They could be atoms or molecules or, or even hard-boiled eggs. And either direction, you'd have to say one mole is equal to 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd atoms. And to go to the top island, the North Island, the volume island, to go from volumes to moles, you'd have to remember this equality. One mole is equal to 22.4 liters of any gas at you know, standard temperature and pressure. So to go back and forth from volume to moles or moles to volume, you'd have to say this equality, which really, of course, is a conversion factor. So if you can draw this map, and you should, put this on pause, draw this map into your notes. These silly islands will, of course, represent the mathematics of all moles. We can start with grams in Mass Island, and I can say if you have this many grams, how many particles or atoms you have? We did a problem like that in class the other day. 50.0 grams of silver, how many atoms of silver? We could start with a certain number of atoms and I can say, well, how many grams is that? We've done problems like that. Soon we're going to do problems with volume. I can say, if you have 78.2 liters of carbon dioxide, what does it weigh in grams? Well, there's no way to go from any of these outside islands to any other outside island unless you go through moles. And that's because moles is central in chemistry. Now, if you try to take a shortcut, oops, I didn't show and I can't draw it. Usually I draw this on the, on the board, but I can't. If you try to break the rules and go from volume to mass or mass to particles or particles to volume without going through moles and take a shortcut, that shark on the front page of your notes, that's the mole shark and the mole shark would eat you. You can't break the rules. Stay on the bridges, and pay the tolls, and that will help you get through every single mole problem in the universe. There's no more. This is a setup. So whatever island you're on, you can start at any of those four islands and go to any other one. It's either one step math problem. The biggest problem is a two step math problem. And we're going to do some right now. So look at this. How many liters of neon gas are in 65.3 grams of neon? We got to start at the beginning here. Now, what is the beginning of this problem? Let's make a plan. Let's look at what we're going to do. And then we're going to do the problem. So what is the beginning? We're going to start with, of course, grams. Look what we got. We're starting at the bottom right. We're going to start at what's called Mass Island. We're starting with mass. We got 65.3 grams. Now, from Mass Island, there's only one place to go. You got to convert it to moles. You can't do anything else. You can't go directly to liters. We want to know liters. We can't get directly there. The shark will eat us. We have to get to moles. Once we get to Mole Island, then we do another conversion and we can get to volume island. So it's going to be a two-step math problem. We're going to start at the bottom on the right, go into the middle, and then, excuse me, we're going to go north and get this done. And there's our picture. We're going to start our mass, go to moles, and then go up to volume. And if we try to take a shortcut from mass directly to volume, the mole shark will eat us. So let's see how we do this problem. Here's the setup. We're going to start with 65.3 grams of neon over one. We always start over one so that you can see the units are in the numerator. Now to go from mass to moles, you have to say the toll. One mole is equal to the molar mass. Quick, put your finger in box number 10, neon, and tell me what the molar mass is because that's going to help us figure out what the conversion factor is. One mole over 20 grams. Now, I know to put the grams in the denominator because I already have grams in the numerator and the grams of neon have to cancel. 
and I want to convert from grams to moles. And by doing it this way with this setup, with this one mole of neon over 20 grams, I cancel the grams and I can convert this into moles of neon. The grams cancel, see them? Little, little cut lines. And then with three significant figures, we get 3.27 moles. This is just a different way to say how much gas do you have. Do you have 65.3 grams? Yeah. Or you can say I have 3.27 moles of neon because that many grams of neon turns into this many moles. So we made it from one island to the middle, but now we have to go up. We have to go to the volume island. We have to remember something different. So we're going to rewrite this. We're going to put it on the other side over one. So we make sure we know that the moles are in the numerator. Now the toll, what you have to know to get from mole island to volume island is that one mole of any gas is equal to 22.4 liters. Now we got moles in the numerator here. That means we got to put the moles on the bottom and the liters on the top. Look what we got. We got liters on the top, moles on the bottom, and then the moles of neon cancel the moles of neon. And the moles cancel. Now we just have a math problem. Multiply across the top, multiply across the bottom. The bottom and the denominator is just one. And yeah, we can just disregard that. And then we multiply it with three significant figures. We get this answer. This is a math problem. This is a big math problem. But what did we just figure out? If you had a balloon that was 65.3 grams of neon, if you knew the mass and you knew it was neon, you could tell me how big the balloon was. How big a balloon do you need? You need a balloon that's 73.2 liters. And when the gas is at standard temperature and pressure, which is normal conditions, and all our gases will be at normal conditions now, that's how big it's going to be. Because moles is central in chemistry. Moles is mass, and moles is also volume of gases. Moles is in the middle of everything. And if you know one thing, you can turn it into moles, and then you can turn it into something else, and everything is connected. The shin bone is connected to the ankle bone. Here's a great, great question. Make believe, because if you have a prize, it's more fun. You win a prize, 3.58 times 10 to the 24th atoms of aluminum. How many grams is that? Now, each atom of aluminum is freaking tiny, and you got gajillions of them. But you can actually quickly, mathematically, figure out how many grams you have by doing this mole island math. Now, where are we starting? We're going to start on the bottom left, particle island. And the only way we can get off that island is to take the bridge to moles. We have to convert from atoms <clears throat> to moles. So let's set this up. This is how many atoms we have. It's a big number, bigger than a mole, right? Times 10 to the 23 is a mole. This is bigger than a mole. And you have to say the toll. One mole of any element is equal to 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd atoms of that element. So we get atoms already in the numerator. We got to put the atoms in the denominator. And that's our, our conversion factor. And now we're going to cancel all those atoms. Look, we're going to cut out those atoms. And now we have kind of a big math problem. But don't worry, it's big. Watch what we're going to do. We're going to multiply across the top and multiply across the bottom. And then I'm going to separate the coefficients and the exponents. Watch what happens on this next move. The 3.58 in the numerator gets divided by the 6.02 in the denominator times the 10 to the 24th in the numerator divided by 10 to the 23rd in the denominator. And the unit, I didn't write it here, but the unit is going to come out as moles of aluminum. So we're going to go from atoms, we're going to convert to moles. Now the first part, use the calculator. 10 to the 24th divided by 10 to the 23rd. This is like a subtraction. 24 take away 23. That's 10 to the 1. That's equal to just 10. So watch what we get. We get 0.595, that's the decimal, from the division, times 10 to the 1. And what's 10 to the 1? It's 10. So multiply 0.595 times 10. So we changed this many atoms to 5.95 moles of aluminum. Now, one of the things about this mole stuff, there's a lot of equal signs. Is that the answer? No. We don't want to know moles. We have to know moles, but we want to know grams. So now we have to take that number of moles of aluminum and convert it with a molar mass because one mole of anything equals the molar mass and convert it into grams. So we're going to rewrite the 5.95 moles of aluminum down at the bottom. 
and we have to convert it. Now, what is the molar mass to aluminum? Get out your periodic table, put your finger in box number 13, and aluminum is 27 grams per mole. We always round to the nearest whole number, because that's our class rule. We could use all the decimals, pain in the neck. 27 grams per mole is gonna get us close enough, has unlimited significant figures. So we're gonna set it up this way. Since we already got moles in the numerator, we're gonna put the moles of aluminum in the denominator and the grams on top. And when we do this math and, and divide out the aluminum moles, the answer is gonna come out in grams. And that answer is 161 grams of aluminum. Big deal. This is a big deal, actually. We start out with bazillions of atoms, and they're way too small to count. But we know because of certain equalities, because of certain tolls on the bridge, that 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd atoms of aluminum is a mole. And we also know that if it's aluminum, that 27 grams is a mole, we could just twist, twist, twist these units until we get the ones we want. And we can go from a certain number of atoms into moles and then moles to grams. If you had 161 grams of aluminum, you could say, if there's some math, hey, I got 161 grams of aluminum, I actually have 3.58 times 10 to the 24th atoms. I don't have to count them, I just know that they're there because I can do the math. Moles are central in chemistry, and that little map is gonna guide you through every single mole math problem. This is the last problem for this Zoom. This is another funny one. You find the little gas canister. Here it is, look, we got it. 7.99 times 10 to the 25th molecules of carbon dioxide. Carbon dioxide, take a deep breath. Here it comes. You have 7.99 times 10 to the 25th. This is a gigantic number. 10 to the 23rd is a mole. This is 100 times bigger. This is a lot. It's a lot of gas. But gas particles are small. What does it weigh? What's the mass of this many molecules? Well, where are we starting? We're going to start at particles and have to go to mass. So we're going to go from particles to moles. That's our first step. We've got to take the bridge, pay the toll to get there. And then once we switch it to moles, then we're going to go over to mass and pay the other toll, use the other conversion factor. So here we go. We're going to start where we're starting with. We're starting with this many molecules of carbon dioxide. That's what we were given in the problem. We're starting there, we gotta convert it. Now, since we got molecules, which are particles, in the numerator, we have to put Avogadro's number in the denominator. One mole of carbon dioxide is equal to Avogadro's number. There we go, on the top, in black, and then the molecules of carbon dioxide cancel. Now, into purple, we do the math a little easy. The numerator is 7.99, the denominator is 6.02. We divide that part and then we multiply it by 10 to the 25th in the numerator and 10 to the 23rd in the denominator. I didn't write moles of carbon dioxide, but that's gonna be the unit. So we have to do the first part with a calculator. Now, 10 to the 25th divided by 10 to the 23rd, you gotta subtract them, it's gonna be 10 squared. So that second part is gonna equal 100. So it's gonna be this decimal times 100 moles of carbon dioxide. So it's going to be 1.33, 7.99 divided by 6.02 equals 1.33 times 10 squared or 100. So do that in your head, quick. Move the decimal. Look what we got. Boom, 133 moles of carbon dioxide. Now moles got a lot of particles. We got a lot of particles. But it's carbon dioxide. Carbon dioxide's a gas. doesn't weigh very much. So we have to convert all of these moles. We have 133 of them into grams, that's our next step. I'm going on to the next slide because I don't have any room. So on the next slide, I'm gonna have 133 moles of carbon dioxide. Now in order to go from moles to mass, I need to know the molar mass of carbon dioxide. Now I happen to know it. I know how to figure it out. I'm actually, I don't remember if I'm gonna show you how to do it. No, I didn't. Maybe I'll take a quick second and I'll draw it out. Let me see if I can do this in the bottom really quick so you can see how this works. If we write CO2 and then we list this carbon and oxygen, and in this compound we have one carbon, and each carbon, if you put your finger in the box, is going to be 12 grams per mole. So we got 12 grams of carbon 
And in this compound, there are two oxygens, and each oxygen is 16 grams. That's a six grams. That's going to be 32 grams. And of course, if you sum that up, 44, that's English, 44 grams per mole. So that's where that comes from. I'm going to clean my drawing and get back into business. So this stuff happens to have a molar mass of 44 grams. You'd have to do that on the side, unless you can remember this one. And there's a mistake. Look what it says right there. This is supposed to be CO2. I'm going to have to fix the slide. I don't know how that happened. Every once in a while, a little gremlin gets in here, but it's 44 grams of carbon dioxide is a mole. Now, next, we're going to go to the next slide. The moles of carbon dioxide are going to cancel. And then we're going to do the math and we're going to get 58, 52 grams of carbon dioxide, but we can only have three significant figures. So it's going to be 5,850 grams of carbon dioxide. So we started out with bazillions, bazillions of molecules. We changed it into moles. And then from moles, we changed it into grams. Now, does this weigh a lot? This is about five kilograms, about 12 to 13, 14 pounds at most. No, not so much. It's a big balloon, right? 133 moles. Each mole is 22.4 liters. This balloon is bigger than a room probably in the classroom. But it's not going to weigh too much because gases don't weigh too much. It'd be hard to pick up, but you could lift it because you're smart and you're strong. Let's see where we are. We're done. Look at that. Two-step mole problems. Draw that map. You know what you want to do also? There's a table called Table H, which is a really good table. Table H for happy. Gives you a little bit of room. See how the bottom is all blank? Now watch what I'm going to do. All right, you got to do this part. Don't just go crazy here. You want to fold this in half. And right here, you want to fit that map. We got to save this for something else, all right? Don't use the whole bottom. You want to draw the four islands and you write in the four, the three tolls to go from each island. All right, you got to know them. You got to have it handy because we're going to do a lot of these problems. And then not only are we going to keep doing moles, another day we're going to add to the other side of that page and we're going to, we're going to add to it. Thank you for watching. I know this can be difficult. I know it. you have to call and ask for help or you have to watch it again and do the math. I'm sorry that there was an N there instead of a CO2. I'm going to fix that now. I'll fix it online. All right. Stay out of trouble. Be happy. Over and out. End.